Good on YouTubers and thank you for tuning in to the Dice Toy Review. We're not only just going to be reviewing just one of that product, but two, which is actually quite good news. Hooray! But before that, there was actually a couple of things. There's one I might probably say at the end of the video. And the other, I'm going to talk about the weather right now. Because last week was, of course, straightforward warm. Well, yesterday was quite warm and sunny. But hey, we've gone to a very typical May in the UK. And let me just show you. Oops, I've actually just forgot. I've actually got two trains running in this toy view. So hey, they may cause a bit of confusion and delay. Let me just start off. This one here before there's going to be more chaos. Yep, and the other one goes to. For some reason, this train is going a little bit slower than the red one, uh, which may not actually help. Uh, yeah, I think um, obviously I don't know what to really say, but uh, let me just go ahead and show you the toys as I'm about to do this very strange toy with you. Uh, oh no, I think there's going to be a train crash. Oh, well, <laughs> that's something I've never ever thought of doing on videos on YouTube. How rad was that? Really, really weird. Okay, I'm going to grab the two of that products. The first one we're going to take on that is pretty much a boring product because I've already taken a look at uh, a very similar product before. It's this one here. It's the Summer Run Cormorant vs. Herring Girl Pair 5 Pack. I've already covered this toy in another video, but I might as well just show you somewhat totally interesting, it cost about £33, I don't know why this product idea had to be really rebooted before we had another train crash, uh, which you didn't see on camera, let me just show you the back of the packaging which looks like that, quite a, quite a derpy looking cormorant, kind of looks like cormorant from uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, that's quite weird, and there's just your typical herring gal design here, right? quite interesting isn't it, alright let me just go ahead and pack this, Am I seeing any total differences? I haven't got time to compare with the other previous toy that I think I've made in a previous video of such. Okay, let me just show you what this one here is. This is, of course, your typical herring gal. It's got like a much more larger eye ring, of course. And there's the other side too. Noticing that the tail is quite very nice somehow. I love the beak. It looks quite slender looking. But, um, hey, it's not too bad. I'm just stopping some trains here because I don't want to have any chaos and accidents around this video, hey? Yep, just starting of course, hey? And most importantly, those birds have names. Uh, two of them are herring gals. They're basically in their breeding plumage. Uh, they both look exactly the same. Uh, as obvious as it sounds, apart from a bit of disformations from the back of the tails. Next up is this Cormorant. Oh my goodness me, I love the proportions on how this bird is actually being rendered. So much so, it actually uh, replicates so much like the real thing that you see out in parks and stuff. You know, lakes and ponds and reservoirs and whatnot. What it's quite a nice bird. It's got like a hook beak. I've noticed that this one's a little bit longer than the other models I would have covered previously. It's also got much more of a Nice uh, sort of, you know, y yellowish, ochre, brownish type colour. Quite nice. And then we've also got some salmon. And uh, I'll tell you what, this toy view is going to go completely a while. This is like some weird Guinness toy, I call it, though, eh? Sort of sit back and watch all day long. Okay, we've got some salmon fish, okay? Looking very, very weird and rad at times. And I don't know what to really say. Whoa, that was a knife fish, and then got a train crash. And um, we've got two of these little salmons, of course. I think they're quite big in their own way because, you know, that's what they all look like somehow. For the, uh, the purpose of that design. I can see the eye, it's also quite nice. Interesting eye detailing. And for some reason, the models look a little bit lot much more skinnier than what I had in previous toy views of such somehow. But nevertheless, it looks quite quite good uh, in its ways it's quite nice and you know pretty much detailed I mean what else do you want more to say uh, from me uh, not much I could really say hey, but just basically just a very weird repeat of the four and I think there's going to be another train crash well I certainly jumped the shark on that expectation didn't I 
Who knows? It almost feels like that this toy view is kind of like a little canary in the coal mine sort of scenario. Well, who knows about that? I don't know why I'm doing too many idioms. That being number two. Obviously, let me try and survey what's happening with this utter toy view because I can definitely tell that those trains are going to cause a bit of chaos. Should have showed you the train station effectively, hey? But there they go, there goes the two little blighters. Tracking their own ways. Yay! Thank goodness for that. Okay, our next product is, in fact, our last one actually. It's the Red Breast Goose Program Breeding Program Facility Family Mix Flock Mix 12 Pack. And for some reason, it's got quite an expensive price of £35.50. And I think one of the trains has started to derail, which isn't great. And what's. Oh, <laughs> look at the logo. It's been splotted with some water colouring in it, which doesn't look great. And there's the back of the packaging, which looks like that. It looks very, very strange. You know, we've got four geese and eight goslings. Wait till you see the redesign on those birds. I don't think we've ever actually had uh, a bird like this before. Uh, I think I did this last year in 2022, where they had a much more roundish looking head, like the black-headed gulls. But um, I think they're going to have a very similar design to the Canadian geese. They almost kind of look like a cross between a barnacle goose and a Canada goose. Maybe with a hint of Brent goose, which is one goose species I've never seen. And oh dear, I think the points have made the train go awry. I think we're going to have a train crash. Whoa! Oh man, that's not what we all thought of. But hey, I've got a little surprise for this train right here. Let's get these geese out of the packaging. Coming in for the unpacking, and I tell you what, uh, so far this May, um, yeah, there's been a lot of expensive prices, uh, ranging around thirty-three pounds to about thirty-six. I don't know why they're pretty much expensive. It's kind of like the Hornby trains, uh, but anyways, let me just go ahead and take a look at the geese themselves, and look at that—a total redesign of what I've seen before. Somehow it's strange. So much so they look a lot much more skinnier and oh no, uh, another train crash. That's not what we want to see. But hey, those geese here are totally uh, gaggling for it. <laughs> Sorry for the pun, but hey, that's what you call it, a gaggle of geese. I'm actually quite curious if I can rewell both trains without causing another train crash. Um, okay, I wonder if there's more chaos added into this video, hey, but let's take a look at the red-breasted geese. They look a lot much more skinnier and not so chubbier than like the previous models I've actually have made. And what's even more surprising is, is that the colours look exactly much more realistic than the uh, other models. It's interesting, it's actually got much more of a realistic design than what I've done in the previous Videos of light when I covered the specimen and oh no, I think there's another train crash. Whoa, that was a complete knife edge, eh? A complete knife edge uh, to this railway system. Uh, since we've got two trains in the store view, I think there'll be a lot of chaos. I mean, who knows about that? I'm waiting for that blue train to get through. Okay, so yes. Oh yes, the red breasted goose, I think. The gripe for me is it's probably the neck colour, uh, but I think the overall bird looks okay. Uh, I think it's all grey, which doesn't really matter because, you know, it can turn up like this when it's on sunlight. But hey, nevertheless, why digress on just colours that are not that realistic to what I think in the first place. And oh no, I think there's going to be a fault somewhere on the line. Yep, I forgot to stop the red train. And uh, nearly actually thought of just, <laughs> I nearly didn't want to say anything, but hey, let me just go ahead and move out this train. I was meant to do a flipping jump cut. Bloody hell, where did I go wrong in this toy with you? I nearly failed back then. Anyways, uh, these geese have got like a white uh, band right over the beak and also the eye sockets, of course, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, the neck colour for me, it's not really doing it for me. I think they should have gone a lot much more orange. Uh, and that purpose, hey, look, they look more golden than, let's just say, um, how do you call it? Just reddish orange. I think that's their more preferable realistic colours. Uh, so nice that we've got about four models each, each of the adults. This one looks quite slender looking, of course. 
Quite a long, elongated looking beak. I don't know why, uh, but it looks totally cool. Surprisingly, you know, they're meant to be quite compact. Probably about the same design as Brent geese. Uh, but I haven't seen any wild Brent geese yet. Maybe if I have some time to go to like at any coastal estuary type area, if I have some time. But hey, time will tell. Uh, let's take a look at the goslings. Uh, all of the um, adult geese have got names except for the goslings. Uh, which I might take a look at them now. Very much bland in design, but hey, who cares about them being as like that? Although this one's got like a bit of a squarish type beak rather than a pointy bill. I don't know why. Maybe it's probably because of cutting corners. Much cheaper that way, isn't it? It's quite funny when, you know, toy companies don't really seem to pay attention to detail. Uh, okay. Well, obviously, I am very responsible of making products like that. And overall, it's not too bad. Uh, but hey, you know, somehow I've got a little surprise. And oh no. Oh no, I think we've got a... Oh! It looks like it's a head-to-head -head collision. I think both trains are down. Well, not yet, actually. But I think it's given me a bit of time to um, have a look at the, um, the geese. They're quite nice little flat-looking beaks, but who cares? Quite very small, diminutive looking eyes. They look quite a bit blurry and a bit distorted because of the um, charcoal that I added. It makes them look very much, you know, very bedraggled, small, cutesy looking and very much realistic. That's how I can really describe these geese. But anyway, so I've got a little surprise. Okay, maybe if I should try and do a little jump cut. Well, since there's no passengers inside this train, I don't know what kind of passengers should I really insert. How about a couple of geese? Will they actually flock their way into the train? Not sure if they fit in. Uh, it only sits in one goose. Let's see if one of the geese can have a bit of a ride on the train. <laughs> Yay! It's the Goose Express, everybody! How weird is that? So, yes, uh, very nice. So have a little goose riding on the train, eh? Maybe this train is just pretty much giving this goose a bit of a break because, hey! Oh no, that's not what I was meant to see. A train crash. It's more like a wild goose chase or wild goose train crash. I don't know. Seems like it, doesn't it? But hey, I think it's time for me to end the video. Well, I've only decided to run one train in this video because you know why? It seems like that. This video has seemed to be very much crazy in terms of how much jeopardy involved. Uh, I can tell you what, it's been quite a fun toy view to make actually, somehow, despite having two trains. Uh, anyways, here's the goose back again. It's time for me to repack and flock all of the geese, hurt them all up back into the envelope. So nice to have the red whisted geese, man. So nice to have a specimen that I've never ever covered in the first place. So, anyways. If you really enjoyed in this pretty strange and rad toy view, well, please give this video a like, subscribe for more for videos in the future, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye for now. We all want to come in and take a look at this new support, uh, just before I should actually properly end this video. Uh, of course, as you might have noticed that the month of May has been straightforward, one of the most distressing months. But hey, one of these news reports actually caught my eye and caught my ears, strangely enough. And strangely enough, um, as sad as it sounds, sadly, this is actually one of the most distressing stories. Well, one of the stories that I've actually have seen so far in BBC News. And again, I'm fairly sorry to show you this because, hey, well... I've got most of my audience, some of my audience from Southeast Asia, and it's really sad and distressing to see such a news report like this. And to be honest, whenever I see news reports like this, it, li it literally brings such sympathy to many different parts of the world. Uh, Singapore, Thailand, and the UK, and also other countries around the world. And there you go. Uh, just one of the most heartbreaking and one of the most, how would you call it? I don't know what to really say, but it has been one of the most distressing stories that I've actually came across so much so in this video. And again, I am fairly sorry to show you one of the most dangerous air crash investigation 
type videos on YouTube. Well, not really in, in a sense, but hey. Uh, but I'll leave this video here before there's any more chaos.